three feet apart now, right? Oh, really? CDC guidelines say you can be three feet apart now. Oh man, I need a mask. No mask? No problem. Let me show you some places where you can find a mask. You can find a mask in the front entrance, the back entrance, the side entrance, the main office, and even from some of your favorite teachers. Remember, Harrix, always recycle, aside from glass and garbage. Thank you. Oh my god, I can't believe this. Hey, 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 you are the 1,000th student to wear their mask properly. Oh my god, it's amazing. So, how does the mask feel? Uh, well, I, I feel great that I'm protecting my community and uh, I like to wear it above my nose and my mouth. So how comfortable is it to wear it like that? Oh, it's so soft and it's so comfortable and it really protects my face. Hey guys! Hey man! Yeah! Yeah! Man. Go. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey bro, you gotta wear your mask. Oh, alright. Over your nose. Ah, gotcha. Have a good day. Remember, Herrix, make sure to always wear your mask over your nose while inside the building. Gather at your lockers, get what you need, and get going. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, I'll use the bathroom, so I'm just gonna take my mask off. You have to wear your mask everywhere in the building. Okay, I'll use it everywhere now. Make sure you wear your mask everywhere in the building, and make sure you wear it properly over your nose and over your mouth. It takes determination and perseverance. A bottle. And of course, the shot. Kobe! What are you doing, man? I'm supposed to put this in the recycling bin, not the garbage can. It's as easy as opening the lid and saying, Kobe. Remember, Eric's to recycle all plastics, aluminum, tin, and paper. And please keep all glass and other garbage out of the recycling bins. Thank you and stay safe. I have waited so long for Herrick to pet all the classes. And now, you too can go to your Herrick's K-12 account to get the links to order your Battle of the Classes t-shirt. 
By ordering now, you will guarantee that a shirt in your size will be waiting for you the week of battle. Shirts cost $10, and you can pay when you pick up your shirt. Shirts must be pre-ordered by Friday, April 8th. Finally, battle the classes. How often have you woken up in a darkened room and had no idea what time it was? Could there have been a time when the universe had no time? Because light has a speed limit, everything we see actually took place in the past. But the solitary saving grace from this endless nothingness. Herrick's Battle, Battle, Battle of the Classes this May. I'm you, from the future. What do you mean? What are you doing May 20th? I don't know. That's lame. What do you mean? You should go to battle the classes. I mean, that sounds cool and all, but it's May. I kind of want to be outside. Lucky for you, this year it's on the field. Whoa! Come to Herrick's Battle of the Classes. May 20th, this year on the field. Come to Herrick's homecoming, pick up at 6 p.m. and fill up these stands for the game against Long Beach and get here early for the pep rally to show you Herrick's pride. I remember Herrick's, let the players play, the coaches coach, and the officials officiate. Homecoming is September 17th on the high school football field. Pick up at 6 p.m. and come to the pep rally on the field right after school and show your Highlander pride. Classes. Yeah, battle. Uh, what about it? This year it's gonna be outside. May 20th on the high school field. Oh, so battle's outside. Cool. Take note, Herrick. Battle of the classes on May 20th this year outside on the football field. Want to know why these kids are super duper excited? Well, Battle of the Classes is right around the corner. And get this, it's outside. See you there. What do I do now? Are you ready for battle? Um, uh, no. Well, get ready, son, because we got a job to do. Move those legs, Dave. Move like that, sucker, you win you battle. Uh. <sighs> Smell that, Zane? That's gonna be your home on May 20th. If you wanna see who wins battle, then come on May 20th down to the turn. Let's go, juniors. Get back down there.
There comes a time where a person has to prepare for something. And for Alex Cabrera, it's battle. You see, preparing for tug of war requires pulling a lot of weight. Whether it be soccer nuts, cross goals, or even people, the prep is extraordinarily difficult. But the thought of victory is something that drives someone to the next level, to push their limits just to remain on top. And well, for Alex, I want to win battle. We take our announcements very seriously in the TV studio. And sometimes when the actors get a little dry, we gotta call a professional. It's your guy, Matt Bravo. No! No! It needs more passion, Mr. Bravo! Passion! I mean, we give all credit to them. Use your inner passion, Monsieur Bravo! Be the announcements! Be the announcements, Monsieur Bravo! And sing! They're what, what makes our announcements run. Happy Friday, Herrick's High School. It's your guy, Matt Bravo, back here with another sports update. It is magnifique. Throughout history, humans have always found a way to do battle. Territorial disputes, civil wars, world wars, all have been humanity's greatest battles. However, in all of history, no battle has been so great as the Herricks High School Battle this year, May 20th, on the field. Don't miss your chance to be part of the greatest battle in history. Come to the Battle of the Classes this year, May 20th, outside on the field. Will you go to TV Studio Club every Tuesday from 3 to 4 in the TV Studio, where you can film sports? Oh. Does that count as a catch? And special events. Yes! Yes! Five years of practice, finally got it! Nick PSAs. Chess is a great game to play during your free time, but it's only great if you have someone to play with you. Uh, can we get that cat back in here? And most importantly, your own independent films. Oh god, it's recording me. Well, do you? Um... No? Well, why don't you drop on by? Ah! Hey you, <laughs> what? looking for something to do? Then come on down to the TV Studio Club on Tuesdays from 3 to 4 in the TV Studio where you can film sports. special events. Make PSAs. Cats are better than dogs. And most importantly, your own independent films. Carter! Hope to see you there.
Did you know you sip from your top of the cup instead of the bottom? Watch. Good morning. Our first story is about the new cafeteria committee. The cafeteria committee is coming out with new food items and improving the menu so students can get the nutrition they need, including new rules to ensure everyone's safety. Let's dive in with Emmett O'Brien on more about the cafeteria committee. Emmett, take it away. Thanks, guys. As we knew, the cafeteria was rebuilt a couple years ago to look like a real deal cafeteria, and it most certainly does. But other aspects of the cafeteria are being improved now. Uh, we're starting to see the rise of new food items being more prominent in the cafeteria, along with more rules to keep everyone in the cafeteria safe and happy. We talked to a couple students of what they'd like to see in the cafeteria. So let's head over there now. Uh, the cafeteria recently made a new uh, rule that there is no more backpacks on the food line. What do you think about this? I mean, it's a bit annoying, but safety is a priority, so I don't mind it that much. Uh, the cafeteria committee is open to suggestions by students. Uh, would you like to see any, like, food items uh, in the cafeteria? Uh, just some more variety of food choices, more healthier choices. Because um, I think currently we don't have enough healthy choices, so more healthy choices. The cafeteria committee is open to suggestions by students. Uh, what new food items would you like to see in the cafeteria? They should have uh, bagels all the whole entire day from the uh, bagel place instead of just the first four periods of the day as they won out. Bagels are definitely a favorite. Yes. Thank you, Jerry. The student government has formed the cafeteria committee to be the voice of the students in the cafeteria and to relay information to them. They have recently stated some rules and regulations for all students, such as no backpacks on the lunch lines, be kind and patient to the lunch staff, wear a mask online, and take your ID cards out of the plastic slips. Along with these regulations, the cafeteria Cafeteria Committee has also stated, remember that the form is open to you at any time to make suggestions about food you want for the cafeteria. As long as students purchase it and enjoy it, it's no problem to try it. The PTSA has, also, has a nutrition committee too. If you would like to join and voice the things you like in school and would like to see more of, or things you wish we had, please come down and join us. So day by day, the cafeteria is being improved greatly. Whether it be the return of the tables and chairs, or new food items becoming more frequent in the cafeteria. We could say as a community, we're really excited to see where this cafeteria is gonna go in the future. Back to you guys. That sounds really interesting. I can tell that the cafeteria will be greatly improved by the committee. Is it me or I'm really excited for the frozen yogurt? Along with this segment about the cafeteria, there's excitement flooring about the Olympics taking place in Beijing. Vincent has more info on the segment. So let's take it over to Vincent. Thanks guys. Let's take a look at the Olympics. For the 2022 season, the Winter Olympics is being held in Beijing, the second Olympic Games to ever be held in China. And fortunately for the Olympians, COVID has not been getting in the way. China's rigorous COVID policies have been keeping many of the Olympians healthy and COVID free. We are now just going through the peak period of people arriving in China, and therefore we expect to see the highest numbers at this stage but we are confident that the system we have in place is the right system. What we've seen so far, it is working well, and we expect it to continue to work well. We interviewed a few students to see what they think of the Olympics this year. Let's see what they have to say. What do you think about the U.S. only being in fourth place? Well, I'm not too worried about it. They have definitely have the chance to win a lot more medals. They have some of the best and most highly trained athletes in the world, so I'm not too worried about them. I don't know, man. This late in the Olympics, I don't think they're going to pull through. The legacy is ending at this year's Olympics. Five-time Olympian and three-time gold medalist, snowboarder Sean White is retiring from the sport. He has made a major impact on snowboarding as we go to a fan that talks about the influence he had on him. Yeah, I've been watching Sean White ever since I was young and when he was in the Olympics when it, 
and uh, he's been a big inspiration for me, and it's uh, really tough to see him go after all these years. Despite all the pressure you're putting on the competitors, Team America is going strong and can only get stronger from here. Currently, the U.S. is in fourth place. We have won seven bronze medals, ten silver medals, and eight gold medals. Let's hope Team USA can keep doing their best to bring home some more medals. Back to you guys. Thanks, Vincent. I hope to see our country prevail in this year's Winter Olympics as a fellow Olympics fan myself. Along with hopes for the Olympics, there are big hopes for the new musical. The students will be performing The Little Mermaid, and I think we're all excited for an outstanding performance. Now, Nicole, show us more on the Harris High School musical. Thanks, guys. As you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has put many Harris events and traditions on hold. This year, however, for the first time in two years, Harris Drama Club is putting on the Emmy Award-winning show, Little Mermaid. Let's take an inside look into what's going on under the sea. We were able to sit down with the musical's director, Herrick alum, Sarah Fernandez, to ask a few questions you may have. So this is the first Herrick's musical, well, Herrick's High School musical, since COVID started. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose The Little Mermaid as our comeback musical? Well, I think The Little Mermaid's a great musical to come back with because it's family friendly. It brings the community together. Um, but it's also a story uh, that's sort of like an escapist story about hope um, and something that the community can watch and escape to the land of Atlantica that's certainly not plagued by COVID or plagued by any of the craziness of life, but instead has magic and love and life and excitement. The only obstacle in the production, it seems, keeping safe in regard to COVID-19, and the crew agrees. The cast uh, has been really fantastic about keeping social distancing, keeping their masks on. They've all been really, really great and respectful of that, um, which, I appreciate it because that's very important to me as well. Safety is very important. Um, and we just manage it day by day based on CDC guidelines and school guidelines, stuff like that. Is there anything you want to say to students watching this right now? Well, just definitely to come out and see the show. Um, the kids have worked super, super hard on it and they're doing a fantastic job. Um, and we're almost at production, which is very exciting. Um, I'm very proud of them. I'm very excited for the community to see it. I think it's a great cast and musical to have as the final musical in our auditorium before it gets renovated and also a great musical to welcome back theater to Herricks, Herricks High School specifically. Um, so yeah, I would just say to come see it. There's a lot of great work being done in the auditorium and uh, I can't wait for the community to revel in their talent. As you can see, excitement for this musical is brewing. Herricks community is so excited to see this comeback musical. Back to you guys. Nicole, that sounds really interesting. I remember watching the movie when I was younger, so I'm really looking forward to the musical adaptation of the movie. That's all the time we have today. I'm Jason Nanu. And I'm George Clark. And have a great day. Hello, Harris. I'm Matt Bravo. And I'm Michael Mayer. And this is the annual Harris Sports News. Before we get into Harris Sports, we have to talk about the Super Bowl. It was a really great game between two fantastic teams, the Los Angeles Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals. It was a great, hard-fought, back-and-forth game but the Rams came out victorious by a score of 23 to 20. Cooper Cup, the Rams wide receiver, was a Super Bowl MVP. Besides the game, the Super Bowl has many different things to offer. 
And one aspect of the Super Bowl reigns victorious is the food. One of the fan favorites for Super Bowl Sunday is buffalo wings. There are a wide variety of different foods to choose from on Super Bowl Sunday. But here are a few top choices from Super Bowl viewers. These foods include the McRib, pigs in a blanket, potato skins, pizza, loaded nachos, mozzarella sticks, and barbecue ribs to top it all off. Hello HM viewers, and we are back with our next part of the show, which is the basketball segment. And I'm here with current junior, Gavin Lee. Gavin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Bob. Thanks for having me. No problem, no problem. What position do you play? I play shooting guard. Shooting guard. So I'm guessing you obviously say take a lot of shots, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, gotta take those shots. So first question of the day, Gavin. Um, did you play this year? I unfortunately did not play this year. Uh, what injury did you have? Uh, I tore my ACL. Ooh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a gruesome injury. Uh, how did that happen? Uh, it was a practice, and then I took a wrong step, and then my knee buckled, and I tore my ACL. That's rough. That's rough. So, how do you think next year, how do you think you're going to perform with not playing this year, obviously, and, you know, wh what do you think the expectations are going to be? Well, expectations for myself, uh, and I want to be back to, like, my normal, normal form, get back to where I was originally. Obviously, it's going to take a lot of, um, you know, time, effort, a lot of, like, physical therapy, stuff like that, but I think I'll get there. That's great. That's great. Um, so, what... What are the juniors going to do, and the sophomores that will probably be on varsity next year? How are they going to replace the seniors? Because, you know, you lose seniors every year. So how are you going to replace these seniors and still have another great season? You know, the seniors, you know, they're extremely important to our team. They give us leadership. You know, they're very, very talented. But I think this year's juniors and sophomores, a lot of chemistry. Still a lot of talent left. And the experience this year, I think next year, we'll take the next step. And um, I heard uh, basketball made the playoffs this year. Uh, did you guys win in the playoffs? Uh, we lost in the first round, unfortunately. That's, that's rough. So next year, um, how are you going to recover and maybe take that further step of making it farther in the playoffs and having another great season and exceeding expectations? Well, you know, our team has a lot of chemistry. You know, we made the playoffs this year. We had a really good record. And, you know, seniors losing them to be really, really hurtful to us, but... I think with the chemistry and the talent we have, we can still run it back and still be even better. That's Gavin Lee, everybody. Now we're on to our next basketball player, Anish Sabarad. Hello, HGM viewers, and I'm here with my next basketball player, current senior Anish Sabarad. Anish, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Matt. That's great, that's great. And um, what position did you play this year for the basketball team? Uh, I was a forward for the varsity team. That's good, that's good. And um, so, since you were a forward, were you, were you starting? Uh, yes, I was. So, how big of a role did you play this season for the, for the varsity team? Uh, not only being a starter, but I was also one of the captains of the team. And that was pretty big in terms of leading, helping lead the other, my other teammates along with the coach. That's good. And um, what do you think is going to happen next year when all these great seniors leave and all these juniors and other underclassmen will have to step in. Well hopefully uh, I think that we've done our job of teaching them how it's done and I trust them to continue building on what we've done so far and hopefully progress for the future. That's great, that's great. And um, do you think that exceeding expectations this year, you know obviously making the playoffs and did you, uh, did you win in the playoffs this year? Uh, no, unfortunately, we had a tough ending to our season as we lost to Plainview JFK at their place. It wasn't the ending we expected, but it was still an uh, overall great season. Now, how do you think the team will adjust next year with um, maybe making the playoffs and winning a playoff game? What do you think they're going to have to do to, to win? Uh, it's all about the off season. They need to get their work in over the summer, and hopefully that will uh, lead them to be prepared for the next season, the next winter. That's Anish Sabarad, everybody, current senior. Hopefully next year, Herrick's basketball will have a great season. Now, moving on to Melee with Spring Track with Mr. Caruso. Thanks, Matt. For our final segment, we're going to be talking about Boys and Girls Spring Track. Here we have head coach Mr. Caruso. How are you doing today? Good, Mike. Thanks for having me. 
Awesome. So our first question is, how do you think the season is going to perform this season? I think the team is going to do really well. We have a lot of upperclassmen who are going to provide us with really great leadership, and we're looking forward to working with a lot of our newer athletes. That is awesome. Next of all, what do you want to do differently this season than you did last season? Uh, every season is a little bit different for us. Uh, this year we're going to be relying a lot on our senior leadership uh, to help develop the younger athletes. That is really heartwarming. Now next question, what will be the approach this year? Uh, this year we're going to look to showcase some of our top talents. We're going to take them to some of Long Island's premier track and field and even New York State uh, top meets. For our younger athletes, we're going to take them to a lot of developmental meets so they can improve upon their success. That sounds awesome. Final question, what is the most important thing the team can do to be successful this season? I think the most important thing that the team can do is learn to love the sport. Through hard work and dedication, uh, sky's the limit. I totally agree. Thank you for your time, Mr. Caruso. Back to the studio. Thanks, Mayla. Thank you for watching Herrick Sports News. Have a great day. Hello dear viewers, this is HCN, Herrick's Television News. Today we'll be focusing on a new Chinese New Year celebration and happening at Herrick's High School. Before we get started, let's talk about the historical background of Chinese New Year. The history of the Chinese New Year is thought to date back to the Shang Dynasty in the 14th century. Legend has it that there is once a monster named Nian and would attack villagers at the beginning of each New Year. This placed constant fear onto the villagers each year until they found out that Dian was scared of the Carlos Red, loud noises, and fire. Red paper decorations were pasted to doors, lanterns were burned up all night, and firecrackers were lit up so that the beasts could be frightened and scared away. Now on to the interviews. Hey everyone, reporter Tommy here, and I am here with a member of the AACC program, Ellie. Hey Ali, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great, how about you? Oh, I'm feeling great too. Thank you for asking. What is your role in the event? I am a line dance performer for the Lunar New Year. Wow, that's super cool. Uh, what events are offered? Um, there will be the line dance performance, which is accompanied by the Chinese drums, as well as the traditional girls dance, as well as Chinese yo-yo. There will also be pre-show games, including kahoot and raffle tickets. That sounds very interesting. Uh, do you happen to know about raffles, and if there is any, will there be prizes offered? There will be raffles. The prizes are actually quite expensive. There will be gift cards for Amazon, Peter Luger, Home Goods, and Home Depot, as well as a VR set, Roombas, AirPod Pros, and an Nespresso machine. That sounds very expensive, and I hope I win one. I heard that this is your first time performing. How do you feel about that? Obviously, live performances are very nerve-wracking, but I'm just as excited to perform. That's great. I hope you do well. Thank you. Reporter Tommy here, signing off. Following the Chinese New Year celebration, another event known as Herrick Idol will take place in the high school auditorium on April 1st, 7 p.m. Held by Tri-M, the event requires an audition which will limit the amount of participants participating in the event. Two winners will be crowned, a boy and a girl. Three judges will be determining that after the judges limit the participants to only four finalists, the winner is chosen by the audience. And now to our final segment, Alex Rivera on High School Musical. Thanks, Julian. This year's High School Musical is The Little Mermaid, directed by Sarah Fernandez. The Little Mermaid is a great musical and a childhood favorite for many. Some of the main characters, Ariel, are played by Sonia Cowsey and Sebastian, played by Leo Gomez. You'll be able to see the shows in the auditorium on the 25th, 26th, and 27th. Tickets will be released closer to the show dates. Remember, this is a great way to support your theater program. Thank you, Herricks. That's all we have for today, folks. Thank you for watching Herricks Television News.
thinking we should do something more realistic, something more engaging, something with me in it. Oh, now we're gonna make this an advertisement for the Tharp Show? Does everybody need to be in your live studio audience? <laughs> you know, you have so much to say about our ideas, King Fallon, but we haven't heard a single thing from you. I'm the director, I get the last say, all right? Well, if you're a director, you get to keep direction. All right, come on, say, 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 say. Anything, anything at all would be better than Melee's idea. Come on. <laughs> Fine, I'll give you my idea. So, you two are filming. Wait, what am I doing? I don't even like you. specimen we have here. The quality of this stick is, is immaculate. Its curvature, its color, truly a work of art. <laughs> but alas, for this tree, the end is nigh. And as the final leaf, the final twig falls from the final tree, we must ponder, is all of this upward thinking frightening? Driving our planet to the ground. Volcano is the least of our problems. Who uses Bitcoin? <laughs> oh, come on. It's going to leave the viewers dazzled. Oh, man. Plus, not with the dancing or exploding flowers or anything. And also, are we forgetting someone's idea? <laughs> No, everyone loves him. 
you can do all this and more in the TV studio club. <laughs> I told you guys. I don't think you've noticed, but like, there are multiple other people who need to be in this outside of the room. <laughs> Listen to girls. Space monkeys are way cooler than girls. <laughs> Maybe. Because I've got the gun. Okay, here's the deal. Greetings and salutations, everyone. I just finished our project. <laughs> so, this entire time, you've been filming something else. Indeed. Hear me out. Monkeys, but in space. No, <laughs> no, we're not doing space monkeys. No. Why not? No. Uh, what are we gonna do now? Uh, good point. Uh. Hmm. All right. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> you know, this all could be solved if you just listen to me, but no. Alright, we don't need your passive aggressiveness, bro. Well, at least I have ideas. You're the one with all the bad ideas. You don't have any ideas at all. All of your ideas that are around you and <laughs> the I am the perfect being. <laughs> Just an advertisement. Hey, it'll come up with something. Bogan's gonna send us into orbit. What do we do? Let the space monkeys choose. Play it with the space monkeys! Look at this. Preschool style? Really? Preschool style is the only style any of us seem to understand. So, <laughs> Who's gonna take it first? <laughs> oh, I didn't think that through. Here, take us. Let's see what you need to actually do. Uh, Bailey, you do it. <laughs> Man, I've got the greatest idea. <laughs> Shoot laser buggers. And laser buggers go into people's brains and turn them evil. <laughs> and the space monkeys are invading the school. The only way to stop them? Join the TV studio club. <laughs>
In this production room, we're not, we're not a bunch of classmates. We're family. Like a dysfunctional one that has functional. Yeah. You know, I think of these people as my peeps, my homies, my home slices. What's good, brother? Chicka, chicka, chow. Yeah, brothers. Just be gone. The door. I need, Back I need, where you came. What? I need your No, help. this is my own conversation. Let me get something in this. Out. Welcome. Oh, yeah, no, 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 perfect, perfect. I'll get back to you, okay? All right. Got... Mm -hmm. Like always, grade A slackers. Sorry, sorry, buddy. What are you doing? Dude, I tell you all the time to get off the video games and get your work done. Man, this guy Julian doesn't do anything. I'm over here putting in the hard work, and he's just goofing around all the time, playing video games. Such a disgrace. Yeah, all the time, done. slacker, slacker, slacker. You're working hard or hardly working, Julian. I'm working all You know, all the time. Maybe you'd be like him. You'd be less lazy and get your stuff done. I don't know. Josh. I'm working on a job. Yeah. 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 Just level five and getting there, bro. Hey, you're getting there, all right? Yeah. That's the most important thing, all right? Yeah. Get, what are you doing? The screen is that way, Julian. So I'm doing my work and this guy Emmett, he keeps abusing me while I'm doing my work and I'm like the best worker in, in the workplace and I'm trying to work and this guy is not letting me. Let's go Julian, time to wrap this up! Hey, we're both good? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, doing work? Yeah. Better not be looking at that damn McRib. I got you. I'm telling you, my wrath is imaginable. Yeah. I see you later, boss. I, 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 I can't get so much on my mind. I'm thinking about 24 7. I, I just can't. You're an addict. And, and, You're an addict. Yeah, come doing on, McRib. Again. I don't know why I'm How can you be addicted to such a terrible me. sandwich? I'm petrified. Will you tell that SOB I don't want the satellite service? No, Mom. I want the ham sandwich, not the cheese. <laughs> Goodbye. <sighs> Wrong day of work. I got my nickel back to ease my sorrow. Because you're doing this instead of getting your work done. No, it's not. This is Jesus. silliness. This is, yeah. I don't know what to call yeah. it. Yeah. Like you're yeah. What is that? What is that? What? Hey! Get your work done. What the hell is it? Make rib! <laughs> Every time I tell him to not put his focus on the McRib, do his dessert project, what does he do? This sandwich. On what planet is this a dessert? What, what, what planet? I can't do it with this kid anymore. The world of pain this kid's gonna get when I see him. So, Astro.
astronomical. Astro. Oh, what, what the cat dragged in? You can't explain? Yes, I am head anchor here. I am also the assistant director. Assistant to the assistant director. Anyway, I make sure things around here are moving with a nice flow, you know? No jokes. I do not, not play jokes. Ever. Follow me. I hear there's a sale on walnuts. Oh, really? Treat yourself. Oh, oh, yeah. I do here. I um I develop content. Oh, boring myself just talking about it. But my uh, my favorite thing to do here, I mess with this guy T whenever he's doing anything. It's hilarious. Good morning, Harris. Today we start off with a disaster at the county fair. The county pair name today was T and Emmett, and it was an amazing experience for all the viewers. T started kissing Emmett's butt like he always does in the TV studio, and Emmett said the McRibs that Thomas is a poopy head, and Thomas should go watch. No, no. This is awesome. Nothing. Uh, I can see you changing the teleprompt. This is Julian's. I'm Come trying on. to work. So am I. Emmett! Emmett! I love donuts. Just a minute. A great way to start off your day. You know, I gotta say, I'm paying good money for this thing, and they give me this little itty bitty hole. Where's the rest of my donut? Where is it? It's so. so Emmett! 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 Alex is trying to mess with my work! I, I, He's been I, messing with I, you I, too much! I, you're, 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 what I tell you all the time? That's why you're the assistant to the assistant of the director. Yeah, see, I was the one that messed with your announcement. Yes, you were! Now it's Julian's you're job the one to call me a poopy You head. know what? Enough! Had enough of this. You're off the payroll! We don't get paid. Neither do you. This is a high school. Here, here, then use this as payment. Shoot! Thank you. No, wait, wait. Alex, Alex. my donut! Alex! Donut, please. Alex, Look, that donut was my pay. It was my pay, you're too. Not, you're not what getting paid. It? it was a good donut. Well, you ate both of our pays then. Oh, no, just, you're it's not getting you. paid. Right, didn't we say that? You're not getting paid. That's what's up. You're not even getting work done? I know, Julian's ugly. <laughs> it's real, what's going on? You're not thinking about that sandwich, right? No, no. Okay. Big bird is in the other room. What? Well, Big Bird is in the other room. What is going on? What? No, no, I, no, I don't I want had to hear. No, 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 no. I had the gun. How many times have I explained to you it was right in a no, text it was, form? It was one S. It was, it was one me. S means dessert. It was me. It was me. Desert. It was me. Desert. No, no, no. Not I, dessert. No. This is not the food. No. This is not the food. You are all fired. This job is over. Do uh, you uh, understand me? No, 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 no. It's not Emmett's fault. It's all my fault. What? You can just watch this idiot too. Oh, it doesn't matter. matter. So what's going on over there? What was the dessert? The dessert? Are you kidding me? I've had it. It's over. I sh you should have just listened to me. 
Sports News. I'm Christian Thomas. And I'm Thomas Zay. And let's get right into it. Just last week, our school finished the construction of a new fitness center. The ribbon cutting ceremony was on February 15th. Here's Tom Zay with Mrs. Keegan and Mr. Pajigar at the ceremony at the front of the school. I am standing in the Herrick's athletic lobby where they are about to cut the ribbon to the new fitness center. So, Dr. Solano, whose idea was it to build the fitness center? Well, it was a collective idea uh, among uh, a group of us, including the Board of Education, the administration. We identified that the uh, fitness center that we have now really was inadequate. So we wanted to provide a state-of-the-art facility for our students, and that became one of the goals for our 2016 plan. So how long did the construction process for the fitness center take? Well, the design process started about three years ago, so the whole process probably took about uh, three years. The actual construction took a little over a year, but prior to that was the design, revisions of design. One of the things about uh, the design process is that we showed the original drafts to faculty, to administrators, and to students and Board of Education members for their input along the way. And so the design was tweaked, our architects did a terrific job, and ultimately the work began a little over a year ago. Okay. So why do you feel like you need to add this fitness center to the high school? So what's important is that we stress the health, the emotional and also physical health of our students. We want students to lead a healthy lifestyle. As I said before, the previous weight room or fitness center was really very inadequate. So we thought that this would be an important addition. And it will touch every student because this won't only be used by our teams and our athletes, but it'll also be used by our students on a continuous basis in physical education classes as well. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Stone. Okay, my pleasure. Enjoy. So, Mr. Patricka, what effect do you think the fitness center will have on the sports teams? Well, I think, you know, if it follows suit, when we added the new stadium, we saw a lot more student athletes come out for sports who were playing the sports that utilize the turf field. Um, for our fitness center, pretty much every student athlete um, uses a fitness center or for skill training or for strength training. Hence, I think we're going to have a lot of kids utilizing it. So do you think the fitness center next year could function normally without COVID protocols? You know, if, if the positivity rates continue to plunge, I, I, we're hoping that we, you know, we get things back to normal. We are, of course, following the guidelines of the Department of Health, so we follow those guidelines. But right now, <clears throat> it looks like things are going in the right direction. So do you also hope that non-student athletes will utilize the fitness center as well as student athletes and sports teams? Absolutely. I mean, our current, I'll call it the old fitness center, We've seen a lot of students utilizing that, whether they play for a team or uh, just during phys ed class. So I think you're going to see the numbers even double. I, I think the room will be packed, but of course it will be packed safely. But a absolutely, I think we're going to see a lot of kids utilizing it. Thank you very much, Mr. Patricia. My pleasure. So, Ms. Keegan, what aspects of the fitness center are you most proud of? Well, Thomas, when I think about what has been accomplished, what rings true to me in terms of aesthetic beauty of the construction, I should start with the design, the construction, and the use. There's plenty of open seating, all the equipment is well spaced, and the light from the windows, I've never seen something in a school so gorgeous basically. So I think it really aligns with all of our social, emotional, and wellness goals. You're going to work your body, you're going to have peace. 
peace in your heart, and you're going to just be a stronger and better person, mentally and physically. So how did COVID protocols affect the fitness center's construction? I think COVID did not really detain any of our timelines with respect to most of the construction was in a space that really is, although now connected to the building, it's adjacent to the building. So all of our construction crews who had to abide by every pro protocol imaginable, they were working really outside the main setting. Anytime they needed to work within the building, that's when we only allowed them here if they cleared all of our, our protocols, but only when school was not in session. So evening hours and holidays. But it didn't slow us down. Also, what gave you the idea to build a fitness center? Oh, I wish I could take credit for that. I've been on staff for 34 years. I started as a physical education teacher. We used to have a cinder trap. You probably have no idea of that. We had, you know, typical gymnasiums, but they were old school. And Dr. Solano, our superintendent of schools, really has a vision and really upgraded all aspects of the campus here at the high school and across the district. So I'm just proud that I'm still here in this moment to be able to see all of these upgrades and really to see students use it. It's really, it's, it's super exciting. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Keene. Thank you. The varsity wrestling season is coming to an end, or is it just starting? Many of the players just finished qualifiers and they look to keep moving forward at counties. Here's Christian Thomas with some of the wrestlers. Hi, I'm here with Georgie Schumperiotis, one of the wrestlers on the wrestling team. How's it going today? Very good, thank you for having me. So, how's it been, how, how's it been going through a full season and having the season coming to end, along with the playoffs? Uh, it's been very bittersweet. Uh, as a wrestler, we love to wrestle, but, you know, it's a very tiring and exhausting sport. <laughs> so, how hard has it been to go through a full season of wrestling? Uh... Although it's been very fun, it's very difficult because we have to go through two and a half hours of practice every day after school. Uh, most of it's conditioning as well, and it's very exhausting. Um, we don't get home till like seven. It's just very difficult and hard, but overall, I enjoy the sport, so I kept doing it. So how has your coach affected your wrestling career? Uh, my coaches have affected my wrestling career in a very positive way. They've always believed in me, and they put me in a lot of situations. Uh, to win either dual meets or matches. So it showed that they really believed in me and they really depended on me to wrestle well. So uh, coaches benefited me very, very much. Thank you for your time, Jordy. Hi, this is Zach Montalbano. How are you doing? Good, how are you? So how, how does it feel having playoffs and playoffs and the season coming to that for us? Uh, well, it's pretty sad, honestly. Like I, I enjoyed wrestling for the last couple of years. And coming to an end as a senior, it, it's very sad that I won't be able to, to wrestle again in high school. So, how far did you make it this year in, re in division? Uh, I placed second in the, in the conference, and uh, I was, was all-conference this year, losing in the finals. So, it was, it was very sad losing, but I was happy that I placed second. How has it been going through the full season of practices and games? Uh, it was, it's very hard. Everyday practice was two and a half hours of straight conditioning, training, preparing yourself mentally and physically. And uh, it was, it's definitely a big challenge. We started with 57 people, ended the season with a little bit over 20, I think 21 people. It's very it's very hard to, to the normal person can't do it. Uh, how have the coaches affected you and your, and your season this year? Uh, the coaches, I personally, I love the coaches. They, they've helped me out with multiple different things. They're the reason that I've kept wrestling. Like, the coaches are, great guys, great teachers, great mentors in life. And uh, I definitely advise wrestling, especially at Herrick, to anyone else who, who isn't. Thank you for your time, Zach. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Alex Roberto, one of the wrestlers on the wrestling team. Hi, Alex. How's it going, Marty? So, I have a couple questions for you today. How do you feel about the season coming in? Personally, it was a little upsetting because I didn't make all county this year, but I did get to go to the county, so that is, that's a good part. How has being around seniors throughout the season made you a better wrestler? Personally, I didn't really get much from seniors because none of them were in my weight class. But what did help was when my brother, who's an alumni, came back and wrestled with me for the preseason. How do you expect to improve next year going into your senior year? I expect to improve by uh, slimming down and gaining more muscle over the off season, and then probably either doing outside training as well. 
How hard did you have to work to win divisionals this year? I pretty much gave it my all during practice, and uh, it turned out great in the end because I turned out a division champ, and I get to keep my name on the wall. How hard has it been to go through a full season and playoffs? Going through a full season, practices, since they're only around two and a half hours, they're not that hard, but the hard part is just the time commitment because it's six out of seven days a week. And on the weekends, you're losing a full day, like no time after. Mm -hmm. How have COVID protocols affected you this year in the team? The hardest part is just making sure the mask doesn't break or fall off. Otherwise, it doesn't really affect wrestling because you have to come in contact no matter what. How has your coach uh, affected and made you better as a wrestler? My, uh, my coach has helped me get better because not only do they uh, wrestle me, they're also coaching me while we're wrestling because, uh, for one, Coach Lamida is stronger than me and uh, faster, so that helped a lot for uh, some of the big guys who are pretty fast. All right, that's all we have for you. Th thanks, Alex, and uh, back to you, T. With the Super Bowl coming up, everyone is getting excited for the game, but maybe even more for the halftime show. Here's Paul Phillip with more on the show. Thank you, Thomas. So, for the Super Bowl halftime show, the performers are Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. So, let me ask you a few questions, Herrix. What songs do you want to hear this halftime show? And also, next year, what songs do you want to hear? And also, it's really important to mention that a lot of people are saying this is going to be the best halftime Super Bowl show of all time. Do you guys agree or not? It's also going to be one of the most expensive Super Bowl halftime shows, too. What do you think about that? And that's all the news we have for you today. Thanks for watching Eric Sports News. Yeah. Want a Sprite Cranberry? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The answer is clear. I need to get some Sprite Cranberry right now. What are you doing? Yeah, no, Jason's been messing around with me way too much. I'm, I'm happy that he got in trouble finally. Alright, this prank's gotta stop. You've done way too much to Banks. You've destroyed his project, you deleted his project, you stole his ST cards, and you even stole his dolls. That's enough. This has to stop. So here's your punishment. Now both of you guys have to film an event together. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Want a Sprite Cranberry? It's the thirst, thirstiest time of the year. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have just one query. Want a Sprite Cranberry? Uh -huh. The answer is clear. Marty! Man, Marty is so coolest onto what I do to Banks, and Banks is so tempered. And you know, these jokes, these pranks, they're getting pretty boring, but you know, I'm still gonna do it, just cause it's hilarious. Someone stole my project. What are you talking about? Someone stole the project. No one stole your project. Well, where'd it go? I don't know, just you just stop stressing over it. Did you steal my project? I did not steal your project. Did you steal it? T. Nope, it's not me. Well, where'd my project go? Bro, no one stole your project. It's not in the computer. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's Bro, gotta be in the computer. It's not there. 
We just worked on it yesterday. <laughs> what are you saying, man? Come on. I know you stole my project. I did not steal project. I just deleted Banks' project. Marty doesn't even know, and I'm totally gonna get away with this. Someone put my ST card in the green screen room. Uh, who? Who else? I don't know. Who are you talking about? Jason. How do you know it's him? Because he hid it, and no one else is are stealing you sure my you stuff. Are you sure you didn't just leave it there? No. It was. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I really don't. I really don't know about that. Paul, get off your phone. Come on. This is too much. You do something. Actually, do work. Come on. Oh my emo. This is ridiculous. Do some work. And this guy emo. I don't really know what he does in this class. He doesn't do anything like ever. Like he's always like sitting around and like sometimes he's even on his phone. Like it doesn't make any sense. Emo, what are you doing? I should film something, come on. Look at Infinite here. He's being put into the group. He's actually filming. He's doing something to be helpful for the group. You gotta film something and actually help. Come on. Man, but Infinite, he does so much for this class. Like, I don't understand. He's probably gonna be like the president, honestly. Like, I don't even know, like, for the president of the US or this class, but he's gonna be something pretty cool because he's always doing something important. Oh, shoot, my bad. Interview started. Okay, why does Marty praise me so much? I've been doing nothing the entire time. And he's just complimenting me and making fun of Paul. I have no idea why this is happening. Like, it almost seems as if he loves me. <laughs> this is getting really weird. But still funny at the same time to see Emo getting destroyed. So how do you like my project, Mark? Yeah, I really liked it, man. I mean, the theme was amazing, especially with the Sprite Cranberry, because, you know, it's Sprite Cranberry. And, like, it was funny. It was amazing. You know what you make a project like this? Paul, man. Hey, look at Paul. Hey, Paul, what are you doing? Come on, just sitting there. Make a project like Cabrera. What am I supposed to do? Make a project like Cabrera. Come on. I don't even know what to say with you, man. You should do better, Paul. Come on. I'm already trying hard. Not, not Sprite Cranberry hard. You didn't see anything. I'm so done with this class.